Good morning everybody, it is Bridget here from Bridget's Kitchen wishing you a wonderful and hopefully safe start to your working week. If it is work, maybe you're still on holiday. Um, I'm back into it. In fact, Mahay and I have not stopped. <laughs> We are still yet to have a bit of a break, but you know what? We, we love this, um, this time of the year because um, we do find that we don't get as many emails and the phone doesn't ring as much, so we can actually pile through a bit of work. And that's what we've been doing, and it's all for a very good reason, as you guys know. So um, today is Monday here in Sydney, Monday morning, and um, today is the very first day we started our 28th day meal plan that's our gut reset meal plan and g'day to christine thank you for joining me and so being monday morning and being the start of the week i thought i would celebrate the fact that mahay and i and plus a whole team load of people and i'm calling them team gut health reset we all started today um and if you want to start the gut health my gut health um reset which is like i said 28 days you're more than welcome to join us um it's a, we've still got a long way to go we're only on day one but it's very very, very exciting so my gut reset 28 day meal plan is this one here and um, you can get your own copy of that all you need to do is go to um, and Mahay will throw up the link it's in Bridget's face Bridget's kitchen Facebook shop but we'll put up the link for you guys and in the meal plan we have um, obviously four weeks of meals planned and all the meals come out of this the yellow book which of course is the gut reset book so this meal plan is the accompanying um, meal plan for the yellow book for Bridget's Healthy Kitchen so if you have a copy of Bridget's Healthy Kitchen um, you along with thousands and thousands and thousands of people all around the world already have their copy of Bridget's Healthy Kitchen which was my first healthy book this is the accompanying meal plan so you're more than welcome to join us and if you do join us and if you're not currently in our private Facebook group that's where we're all supporting each other that's where we're all doing it together so you're more than welcome to join that group as well Mahi will throw up a link for the group there's a few links to share with you guys today but that's good because we're just getting organized and we all know when it comes to our health journey it's all about being organized and it makes it so much easier so you've got the book which um, has all the recipes and it's the gut reset now you've got the meal plan and the meal plan is the accompaniment to the book and um, as well as that, we also do a book on Kindle. So we're going to throw up the Kindle and then you can join our group, right? So much fun. Okay, so today's recipe um, is from week one of the meal plan. And I gotta say, it is probably my favorite meal of the week. And I know that I'm not alone in that feeling because this particular recipe has by far been my most popular recipe to date. And the reason it's popular kind of I'm not really quite sure but you know I never second guess people's um, people's likes or people's dislikes it just is what it is but this recipe is amazingly popular I think it is comfort food you know we get it we understand it we're like yeah cottage pie totally I, I know what that is I had that when I was growing up you know it's been it's popular not just in Australia and New Zealand but you know throughout the UK as well cottage pie is one of those recipes that make us feel good and the best part about this this recipe is not only does memories make us feel good because we have this memory of uh, oh Lorna's watching naughty from her desk hi Lorna <laughs> oh if you're back at work just keep it on low put your headphones in no one will be able to hear um, so when it comes to this recipe yes it's comfort food it's familiar and it tastes amazing and now we have made it healthy and when I say healthy there is no gluten there is no sugar there is no dairy there is no potato and there is no added fat in this cottage pie and the fact that it tastes amazing it's really easy to make it's only got a few ingredients and yet it's healthy it's really good for your body and it's what's going to start to reset your gut and that's what my meal plan is all about now when it comes to resetting your gut there may be a few reasons why you want to reset your gut um, you may have um, never been on a on a gut healthy um, regime or lifestyle before so for you you might want to just get in, get involved you know really get started and and have a bit of a blast at it and and when you're resetting your gut you're basically cleaning it out you're taking out all the gunk that's been built up and it may be built up from years it may just be built up from Christmas and New Year because you had a bit of a blast and that's kind of the camp that I'm sitting in right now is both myself and Mahi we did let our, our hair down a little bit um, I can let my hair down a little bit further than Mahi 
just because I have a little bit more hair. But um, we let our hair down just a little bit over the Christmas and New Year's periods, as you do. We were pretty good, but there were some moments, because it was my birthday involved in there as well, where, you know, we probably overindulged a little bit more than normal. So I want to get back. I want to get my health back up to a point where my immune system's running really good, and that's what having a healthy gut does as well. You get less illnesses. I need to lose a couple of kilos. That kind of crept on, <laughs> kind of crept on in the last couple of weeks. I lose a couple of kilos. Um, you know, I want my health and my energy to be back where it is, but also for us, we're really, really, really big on um, making sure that moving forward, we are healthy and strong. So all about that immune system. We've got a lot of travel coming up, and you know, travel can really deplete, um, deplete the immune system because you're going into all these different countries. So I want to make sure I'm healthy and I'm strong and I'm a couple of kilos lighter. But you know, for other people, you might be wanting to reset your gut because you want to achieve new goals moving forward you already hit a really big goal now it's time for your next goal so that's cool as well whatever reason you're joining us whether you're new whether you're I'm not gonna say old <laughs> whether you're an old hand <laughs> you've done this before and you're gone this is good this works welcome thank you for joining us again today's class is a good one if you've never tried my cottage pie that's all I can say oh <laughs> just go and do it it's really good, and the family love it as well. If you got if you got kids, everyone just enjoys it. It is good. So let's get let's get into the recipe. So if you've got the yellow book at home, the recipe that we are looking at today is for yes, our cottage pie. And I'd like to say, actually, look at that. I'd like to say hi to Kevin, who's joining us all the way from the Emerald Isles and Island. Hi, Kevin, it is 12 a.m. Oh, you're a, you're a very, very, de um, very um, dedicated um, follower of Cottage Pie. If you're joining me at 12 a.m., so hi to Kevin, all the way from Ireland, and hi to all our friends who are joining us from all around the world, because what really blows me away is that we do have this massive, massive global audience. We also have Sarah joining us from Singapore. Sarah, Mahay and I are gonna be in your town, in your city, in about three weeks. Hopefully, we, we might even be able to do a meetup when we're there. That'll be cool. We could do a, how cool would that be? We'll do a Singapore meetup. All the countries we're going to, we're going to do a bit of a meetup. But yes, let's get into our recipe. And so hi to everyone. Gold Coast, my beautiful Christine. How are you, my love? How are you? Right, cottage pie. If you're playing along at home, it is on page 86 of the yellow book. And as I was saying, it's one of the, the most popular recipes that we've done. It is also one of the simplest recipes that we've done, which makes it even better because it's delicious and it's healthy and it's easy. Okay, so let's get into the recipe so bringing you down to my bench um, what we're going to start off with is the topping of the cottage pie and the topping that we're doing today traditionally a cottage pie has potato as we know we're not going to be doing that we're going to be using cauliflower cauliflower is way better for us than, than potato potato is just a really heavy simple carbohydrate whereas of course this is a vegetable and it's really tasty as well morning Tamara how are you good for you to join us and to Amanda as well joining us from WA still early in WA isn't it three hours behind Sydney so thank you for joining us so with the cauliflower of course all the ingredients because this is a meal plan now so we're a little bit more conscious of measuring our ingredients so make sure you weigh your ingredients before you start um, with the I think in the recipe I have served too but what I do find that people just bulk it out and they make enough you know for the whole week or they make enough for their family so I'm gonna be actually um, doing this for four serves that's for me and Mahay for two days so I'm doing it for four serves so I have um, got enough cauliflower on the go here and what you're noticing with the cauliflower is I'm not actually breaking it up into individual florets because that just takes too long to cook and I'm all about the speed here the efficiencies so what I'm doing is I'm treating it like almost cutting it into big sort of even sized steaks as you can see like slices more than steaks so that way the cauliflower is going to cook really quickly and really evenly because if you want a really creamy mash which we all want a really really creamy mash that's what's delicious here a creamy mash um, if you want it creamy we need to make sure that the cauliflower cooks evenly so then it mashes evenly you don't have hard bits and soft bits and all that sort of stuff so once you've cut your cauliflower evenly and I suggest you do it in these wonderful slices just like that over to our pot put your cauliflower in and then you just add enough water to cover it you don't have to like fill the water up to the top because the, the cauliflower only comes up so far in the pot so just cover it with water just enough to cover it you also want to add in a pinch of salt just a pinch of Himalayan salt goes in there and then that goes onto the um, stove and we're going to 
bring that to the um, bring that to a boil and then we're going to simmer that till it's tender it'll probably take between 12 to 15 minutes for it to cook so over to the cooktop it goes put it over there 12 to 15 minutes bring it to the boil allow it to simmer so while that is simmering away we get to work on the next component well there's only two components here when it comes and that's one of the great things about um, this book is there is because it's mono eating it's literally like one type of main vegetable one type of protein it is so easy to shop and prep for because you don't have to have to have a million and one ingredients and if you have the basics there you have my sticky sauce you know you have your um, different types of like what did I make you say kombu water sticky sauce they were all my prep Actual cooking doesn't take much time. So um, mash is on. We're going to move on, as I said, on to the next step. And the next step is the filling that goes inside of it. And because it's a cottage pie, oh, I've got to tell you this, very important. Because it's a cottage pie, it has a beef filling. Now, if it was a lamb mince filling, it would be a, what would it be? Anyone? What's well, the difference between a cottage pie and a shepherd's pie is the type of meat you put in. So if you put, if you made this out of a lamb mince, and you can make this out of a lamb mince, if you want to, just make sure it is extremely lean, you are now making a shepherd's pie. <laughs> that's the difference, and um, I think that's pretty cool little knowledge to have, don't you? I think it's wonderful. All right, so we're making a cottage pie because we're using beef. Okay, back down to, back down to the board. So um, I have my wok on here, my, my nice wok on there. I now need to do something which, in general terms, does offend me quite a lot. But not today, not today, because look what I have been given. <laughs> if anyone knows what these are, these are, here we go. These are my eye protection onion glasses. There you go, looking fabulous, they've even got eyelashes. They were given to me by a wonderful lady named Stephanie Cowley. She um, gave these to me for Christmas because she knows how much I can't stand cutting onions because I cry. So. Let's give it a try. This is good. This, and they look pretty fabulous too. I mean, you've got to have eyelashes and diamantes, right? All right, so got my glasses on. Got my glasses on. What else do you need? Give my knife a little bit of a clean. Let's see if this works. All right, I pre-peeled my onions. Um, you could, of course, put your onions into your little mini food processor if you wanted to. Completely if you wanted to. But now I have my fancy Diva onion cutting glasses. I can now do this by hand and my makeup won't run because that's actually all it's about right now actually all it's about is my makeup not running and me looking tough because I look a little bit suki lala when I'm having a cry because the onions are too hard on me which is not the greatest thing when you're trying to be a big tough chef so um, I'm just cutting the onions into small dice as you can see the way that I did that the way that's um, quite nice and easy and I'll show you again on that second one now remember, I am, quad I am doubling the recipe, hence why I'm using two onions here. But just follow the ingredients in the book. Follow the ingredients in the book, it'll give you your perfect portions. Right, so, Onion Chopping Masterclass 101 if you want to get this wonderful small dice or brunoise. So peel your onion, cut off the tip there, but keep the root intact. We then cut through the middle of the onion, right through the root. It is still intact, that means it's nice and easy to cut. And then taking up, and I'm not using a huge knife, I'm using my favorite one here, this little vegetable chopper. I'm just going to make incisions right down the onion as, as evenly as possible. But I'm not cutting through the root, I'm still keeping that root intact, which is really important, because it just makes it easier. And then I'm going to go through the middle once, just like that. Not Once again, then the root's still intact, and then that allows me to just go through and chop my onion into small dice. You obviously don't have to do it as fast as I'm doing it because safety is paramount. We want to make sure all your fingers are still, uh, all the tips of your fingers are still attached to the rest of your finger by the time you finish chopping. But it does, um, it does get easier. The more you practice like anything in life, the easier it gets. And guess what? I just realized, because I've just been yabbering away, that I'm not crying. <laughs> I'm honestly, I can't, there's nothing. There's absolutely nothing. Oh my goodness. These work. Whoa, look at that. Makeup still intact. No tears. Oh, don't get too close to the onions. <laughs> okay. It works. Thank you, Stephanie.
company, it is amazing. Okay, so onions are done, wonderful. Um, down over here, I'm just gonna move this along so you guys can see what's happening inside my, inside my little wok. So I'm just gonna turn on the wok and I'm turning it on to a medium to high temperature. Medium to high temperature we want today. Come this way, yep, there we go. So you get a really good look in there. Medium to high temperature. I'm going to start with adding um, some tamari into there. If you can um, find low sodium tamari, even better, just because it's got less salt in there, so it's just going to be easier for our body to shift any water retention. That's why we do the low sodium. If you can't find the low sodium, then don't be too freaked out. Just go for tamari, because remember, that's our gluten-free sauce that we use when it comes to all these frying moments. And we use the gluten-free sauce because we want to make sure we remain gluten free, flea, flea, gluten free throughout this period as well. All right, I'm gonna add in my chopped, my chopped garlics going in there now. I think it's a couple tablespoons of chopped garlic. That goes in there. I'm also gonna add in some spices. So I want the spices to start to get lovely and, and cook through. So the spices that we have going into the filling today, I have um, some cumin going in. A couple tablespoons of that goes in there. Lovely, it's starting to smell very good. I'm going down to medium temperature. I'm also putting in some coriander. And once again, a couple tablespoons of coriander goes in. Because remember, I'm doubling the recipe in the book. A couple tablespoons of that. And then we're gonna give it a bit of a stir. You see? What's happening now is we are blooming the spices. So we're allowing the spices time to get nice and fragrant. And as we're doing that, I'm now gonna add in the onions. Oh, I love this sizzle. You wanna hear that sizzle? You've gotta hear that sizzle, right? Add in those onions. Wonderful. Give it a bit of a stir. Remember right now, our cauliflower is just kind of cooking away behind us. Everything's happening at the same time, which is fantastic. And we're just going to give our onions and our garlic and those wonderful spices just a little bit of time to start getting fragrant and caramelizing and sauteing, which is really important because as the vegetables, the onions are sauteing, they are giving off steam, so they're increasing in flavor, which is really important. Give my chopping board a little bit of a wipe now. Because what I'd like to do now is the fresh herb component. Because we've got our dry spices in there, which is wonderful. And those spices are going to add so much flavor. And they're so important to this dish. And I think they're one of the reasons why people just love it. Because we have got some wonderful um, you know, spices that really complement the cauliflower and it complements the mince. So now that that is like that, I'm going to take my fresh herb component which is over here. This was given to me by Jan at our cooking class in Newcastle on Saturday. She, she gave me lots more than that. That's just one spread. She gave me heaps. So um, I'm going to be adding now the rosemary. Fresh rosemary is going to be going in here. And if you can, please use fresh herbs because they just have such a massive difference compared with the dried ones. They have so much more flavor. They have they have what are known as natural oils in them. So when you are cooking with fresh herbs, you're getting the goodness and also the added bonus of all those fresh oils. And I'm not saying that these oils are fattening, they're just the natural flavor agent in the herbs. And if we're using them fresh, you are getting the benefits from them, the flavor and the health benefits. So our rosemary, just a bit of a rough chop. Well, our onion saute, see how everything kind of happens? There's a timing here. Cauliflower's on, onion saute, Bridget's chopping rosemary. So you can do everything at the kind of at the same time. Provided you have all your ingredients sort of around you, so you're not having to run off to the fridge, gather all your ingredients first, and then you can start to chop and fry all at the same time. Okay, this is looking marvelous. See that? Beautiful. Absolutely marvelous. Good smell that's coming off there as well. It's just phenomenal. So good. Cannot wait to eat this. Ah, so excited. All right. 
my mints. Let me t let me show you through the mints. So um, I am using beef. Remember, this is a cottage pie. I'm using beef mints. And what you may notice from this mint is it's quite bright red. And the reason why it's bright red is that it's extremely lean. So it's mainly there's more meat to fat ratio. So the meat ratio is a lot higher than the fat. There is a little bit of fat in there, which is remember fat is good. A little bit of natural fat is good, but we don't want too much. So the secret here is when you're choosing your mints or your ground your ground beef. What you want to do is find the leanest possible ground beef that you can find because it has less fat content in there. So it's going to be even better for this gut reset. So I have my my um, my very lean. This is a five star beef mint. So it's the leanest one that I could buy. Very low in fat. That now just goes straight in to the pot. And we definitely want to go at this and break it all up. Give it a good stir. And you want to sort of stand over it at this point. You want to stand over it and actually help it along by using your wooden spoon to break it up. So make sure you're using a pot or a wok that's big enough to fit, you know, you don't want to overcrowd your wok. And there is 400 grams, which is just under a pound of ground um, beef in there. And so this size pot is just a perfect size for it. So I have four portions in here. If you're making more than that, definitely increase the size of your pot. It is just going to take so, it's gonna be so much quicker to cook because you've got more surface area to work from. So you get more heat. But also what you will find is that you don't start to stew it at this stage and you stay in the frying stage. Because that's what we're trying to do. We're browning the meat. As the meat browns, the flavors intensify. This is actually a scientific principle called the, um, the Maillard reaction. And that is what happens when meat caramelizes in brown. You get that wonderful smell. You also get that wonderful flavor. So don't overcrowd your pan. Keep it, keep it, you know, in a, in a, but this isn't even half full. I reckon this is probably only a third full. And I've got four portions in here. You may even have to work in batches and that's fine too. You do half at a time if you're doing a really, really big pot, a really, really big um, cook up. You just do half at a time. And what you'll find is that, look how quickly it's browning. It hasn't taken much time at all. It's just wonderful. <laughs> I love it. So browning is important. Remember browning gives flavor. Not overcrowding your pan is also a great trick to make sure that you don't stew, but you get that caramelization of the meat. The browning of the meat happens because you're increasing the flavor profile. I know all these really cool things, right? All these really cool things that you guys are learning that, you know, when you, when you start making it yourself, you go, that's right, Bridget said, don't overcrowd the pan because we want it to brown and get caramelized. And we want that crazy, whatever named scientific reaction happening, the Maillard reaction. It's the same thing when it happens when you brown bread in a toaster. It's exactly the same thing, you know, it's that Maillard reaction happens. So you want it to brown. And right now I am really happy with how we've browned. You know there's no fat in my meat because you're not seeing a slick layer over there. It's just basically just the mince, right? And the onions and, the, and those wonderful flavors in there as well. So that is looking perfect. All we need to do now is do something and the first time I ever made pie filling I kind of thought I had done it wrong because I'm going to be adding in some stock or in the recipe it says water but if you've got kombu water you can add kombu water make it even healthier and I'm adding 400 mils which is like nearly a pint it's a lot it's a lot of liquid and you kind of look at it and you go uh oh I think I just made soup <laughs> And you're like, yep, I just made soup. Um, there's an, oh, yes, you can add, um, add kombu if you want to. Christine, you don't have to if you don't have it. You can add water. But you know, you guys know, kombu is so much better for us. And this is the amazing thing about, you know, as I've been going through this journey for nearly two years now, my health journey, is I just keep on improving our recipes for us. I just keep on making them better. I'm like, you know what? Let's add kombu water into there. We're going to add even more flavor, and we're going to add that wonderful ability for kombu to increase the iodine content in our food, which is wonderful. So, we have our soup there. I am our mint soup. Look, it is. Literally, it looks like mint soup. We are now going to bring that to a bit of a simmer. So I've just turned the heat up to just above medium, just above medium. I'm going to add in a pinch of salt, pinch of Himalayan salt goes in there. 
a little bit of black pepper as well. I, you guys know I love my black pepper. And we're going to allow that filling to start to simmer and come to the boil, which is good. All right. I'm now going to move him off to the side. He can do his thing. Thank you for coming. You go over there. You do what you need to do. I'm going to be over here and I'm going to finish off the mash for us. Once again, you know, it's all about this timing. When you get your timing right, things just don't take very long. And, you know, this is now, has that moment to simmer, simmer, simmer. Thank you very much. I'm going to go over back over to the stove. I have my cauliflower. I'm just going to drain the water from the cauliflower. Oh, first I'm going to test, actually. I'll show you guys how I test to make sure it's tender. So how I test, and by the way, in case you're wondering why the pot looks different from before, this is one I prepared earlier. The other one's sitting over there. So just in case you're wondering, this is the one that I prepared earlier. So um, when it comes to checking to see if your cauliflower is soft enough, the best way to do it is just grab a piece up by a, with a fork. You guys, hope you guys can see that. Yeah, you can see that. And then just give it a bit of a mash. If you can mash it with your fork like that, and it mashes easily, then it is ready to be turned into creamy, creamy mash. So that is perfect. Happy with that. Like I said, it takes about 12 to 15 minutes. This has now come to the simmer, and my I can see it just out of the corner of my eye. Just going to turn that down. Don't want it to bubble too much, just want it to kind of simmer away there while we do the rest. Lovely. Oh, that one's good. Okay, this is good. Mash, perfect. We need to drain it, and draining is really important. I'm going to go over to the sink. Um, I've got my little, I've got my little sieve set up where you could do it in a colander, and you're just going to drain all the water from your cauliflower. And you want to make sure that you drain it really well. You don't want to have too much water in there. You want it, don't want it to be waterlogged. So really, you know, give it a, you can see the water still coming out of there. Water has no flavor. So if we had like a real soggy cauliflower, we're not going to get that real creaminess that we're looking for in this dish. So really, you know, give it a really good strain. Hit it a few times if you need to. Hit it with love. Not out of anger. <laughs> so get out of there, water. I don't want you in my mash. So give it a really, really good drain. Even leave it just to sit there for a couple of minutes if you've got if you've got the time. You can totally let it sit there and come around every now and then and give it a bit of a shake. But we want to get that water out there out of there. We do not want a soggy waterlogged mash. So that is looking pretty good. It's feeling pretty good. If you don't want to boil it, you can also steam your cauliflower, and then it won't be so waterlogged as well. Um, if you want to, there is nothing wrong with doing that. But it still works really really well if we do it in the pot. Turn you down, you're boiling a bit fast. I'm gonna put it straight into my little blender. Um, you could you could do this with a with a you know potato masher. Um, you could, but I must say that this definitely um, gets a better result if you do it this way. This result's pretty awesome. Okay. So that goes in there. We're now gonna add some flavor into there as well really important that we start to think about flavor on its own it's gonna be pretty boring right but if we start to think about adding flavor we're gonna be increasing how delicious this is and for me flavor is roasted garlic the recipe on how to roast the garlic is in the recipe in the book in the in the yellow book so you don't have to worry about that so I've got roasted garlic there that is just gonna go straight in to our little blender I'm also gonna add in and please Please don't, don't be, um, oh, try, try not to be too surprised with the type of spices that I'm adding to this, dry spices. Believe it or not, nutmeg has an amazing affinity with, um, with cauliflower. Nutmeg is wonderful, so I'm going to add a pinch of nutmeg, and I'm also going to add in just a pinch of cumin as well. So now we've added even more little flavours. Yes, I've got a question. Christian wanted to ask, could you cook cauliflower and cumin? Could you cook cauliflower and kombu? Absolutely, Christine. You can absolutely, any, any place you would normally use water, you can totally use kombu. So 100%, you can cook cauliflower and kombu. Pinch of salt goes in there as well. A little bit of black pepper. And then I'm gonna go back to that fabulous Jan uh, grown, Jan grown rosemary. And I'm gonna add a bit of rosemary as well, because why not? Once again, rosemary is in here, goes really well with the, with the meat, with the beef, and also rosemary in here goes incredibly well with the cauliflower. So let's 
give it just a quick chop just to, just to help it along because it is quite um, hard for the machine to get through so just a bit of a rough chop with the cauliflower that goes through there lid on sit down lid on and then we just give it a quick blend we need to do most important have a bit of a taste have a bit of a taste see what you think I think it's yum oh my gosh oh the rosemary gosh it's amazing the ro just that little bit of rosemary in there phenomenal I'm really happy with that I'm not even gonna add anything else to that I think that's absolutely wonderful I'm gonna check on my check on my beef now what is happening over here we have been bubbling away here and what happens while we're bubbling away is the liquid reduces and the flavors intensify. So even though we started off with, you know, soup, <laughs> we now are reducing that sauce down and it's becoming thicker and it's becoming more flavorsome. And you know, and it's, and it's also becoming more like a gravy. And I think once again, why this recipe is so, so popular is because we are basically creating beef and gravy with mash and who does not love that that is just wonderful so once again grab your spoon because you need to make sure you have a bit of a taste it's hot be careful i just realized that very hot but it's very yummy on my second taste i have decided that i like it a lot <laughs> I, I decided on the first taste too but i've also decided I could just do with a pinch of salt, just a little bit, not too much, just to balance it out, just that little bit more. And then what we have there now is our cottage pie ready to be plated up. So I am going to um, use the dish that I've used, this is the only dish I ever use for cottage pie. I don't know why, but I just really, really like it. So. <laughs> You can totally use this for cottage pie or you can use whatever you want but definitely in portions and I know that I can get four portions out of this so um, what I will be doing with my spoon there it is, what I'll be doing with my spoon is making sure that I get four even portions of mince and four even portions of the um, the liquid as well and the best way to do that if you really want to be um, absolutely sure is to weigh it all as it comes off so that you're getting even amounts in every single portion that you are pre-preparing so um, pretend I'm weighing it off I will weigh it off after this but just pretend I'm going to be adding to my tray of course the mints and I'm going to be adding to my tray some of that wonderful gravy that we've created it's all in the gravy make sure you get the gravy the gravy's good the gravy's very very good Turn that down, give it a bit of a wipe. I always like to clean off my sides of my plate because we eat with our eyes. Remember, we eat with our eyes first. Things need to look delicious. Right, that looks good. I know I've got, this is exactly two portions of mash in here. So I'm gonna be adding half of the mash goes on to the top of the pie. The other half I'm gonna save for the other pie. And then you can either, if you really wanted to, there's nothing stopping you from popping that into the oven and just grilling it on top, you know, under the grill or under the broiler. And you can just get a little bit of color happening on there. You can totally do that. Um, you could also do something like this and add a few more pieces of rosemary to it because it looks kind of beautiful. And yes, this um, pie freezes exceptionally well. So you can freeze it down and um, yes, it freezes really, really well. You can freeze it down in portions like that, and then of course just defrost it and, and reheat it in the microwave. It freezes well. The mash doesn't isn't quite as good as when, when it is fresh. It does get a little bit waterlogged, but it still tastes absolutely amazing. So, there you go. <laughs> what do you think? It looks pretty good. I know, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I mean, it just doesn't matter. Like, this is so simple, but it's just so good. So, um, there is, can you see Bridget's 
very famous, very healthy, chef quality, chef quality cottage pie, which is in the first week. It's one of the recipes that we cook in the first week, and we have it twice during the first week. Um, we have it for the 28 day gut set, gut reset meal plan. Yes, I have a question. Yes. So we just had a great question from Stephanie Baxter. She asked whether you can swap out the cauliflower for broccoli. And the answer is, please do, Stephanie, 100%. You can swap those two out. Because some people, they find that broccoli is a little bit hard, oh, sorry, cauliflower is a little bit hard on their stomach, especially if you suffer from IBS. I have to watch the amount of broccoli, um, cauliflower that I eat. I don't have too much because of my IBS symptoms flare up. So if you find that that's the case, or your body just doesn't agree with cauliflower, please feel free to do exactly the same thing but swap it out for broccoli so make a broccoli mash which is absolutely wonderful I will suggest though Stephanie if you're making a broccoli mash when you have boiling your broccoli put a pinch of baking soda into the water that will help to keep your broccoli lovely and green because you don't want to eat something that's looking brown and nasty after it's boiled for a bit of time and you've mashed it it can go a little bit dull in color if you want to keep your broccoli vibrant add a pinch of baking soda to your water while it's boiling and that water will help to lock in the color of the green color from the broccoli so yeah wonderful do we have another question Mahi? Well, could you add carrots and pumpkin? Not on my 28 day gut reset plan, I would not suggest you add carrots or pumpkin to the recipe if you want to have the results, like good results from the meal plan. Um, was it carrots and pumpkin? Yeah. Carrots are very high in starch and natural sugars. So they tend, that's why they're so sweet. You know, they're quite a sweet vegetable. And pumpkin is the same. It's not, it's not ones that I often put into any of my meals as you will have noticed. I do pumpkin every now and again, especially if you're vegetarian. But um, if you are just wanting to follow this gut meal plan, stay away from it. Yes, you, if you're making it for kids, absolutely. But if this is for a specific meal plan and you want to follow it, stick to the program. Stick to the recipes. Try not to uh, deviate too much because your results will not be as good as other people or not be as good as they could be is probably the best way to say it. Not be as good as they could be. So you can add it for kids and stuff, but I wouldn't suggest you add it if you're doing it for yourself. Yes, Mahine. Uh, would you add chili? Um, depending on where you're at. Yes, you can add chili. If you were doing the gut reset program, no, I wouldn't add chili because chili can inflame the gut. So you will notice that there is not a lot of chili recipes in my yellow book as well. I do have a chili sauce and I always say when it comes to chili, go slowly, go carefully. Chili can inflame the gut lining and what we're trying to do is clean it out. So I would suggest unless you are, you know, you're, you're just wanting to eat healthy and you can still have a bit of chili in your life, definitely you can add it at the same time that you add in uh, the pepper, 100%. If you're doing the gut reset, I would avoid it for the next 28 days because you don't want to inflame the gut. You want to keep your gut as clean and healthy as possible. So yes, any more Mahi? No, that's it. Wonderful. Well, thank you guys for joining us today. Like I said, oh, I can't wait. I know Mahi can't wait as well. He's pretty excited. You got one more? No? No? It's, everyone's good? Everyone's great. Wonderful. So thank you for joining me today and kia ora to Theo as well for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Um, and of course, it's exciting. It's day one of our gut reset, which is so cool. So um, if you want to do the program, you want to get the program, you get this. You get my free um, go food, no food list as well. You can get that. Mahay will throw up a link. If you want to join us, make sure you come across to the private page, Bridget's Healthy Kitchen Family. All the recipes are in the yellow book. If you have a copy of that, this is your companion. <laughs> this is how you can move forward. If you don't have a copy of the yellow book, but you want to join the program with us, all you need to do is go and get your copy on Kindle, on Amazon. You can get one there as well. So we're going to throw up some links for that. I hope to see you guys over on the private page. That's where we're chatting. That's where we're supporting each other through the next 28 days and beyond. It's not just for 28 days. This is a lifestyle. But this is going to teach us to have some really great, great starts to our journey. Great start to 2020 as well, January. All right, guys. Thank you for joining me. And we will see you very soon here on Bridget's Kitchen. Take care.